Hello, my name is Kai, and today we're going to be talking about two main ways of getting a depth of field effect to your renders. And one way is with Z depth images, and the other way is doing it manually in Photoshop. And we're going to talk about why I like one of those more than the other. So, as you can see here, we have a fascinating image of a sphere in a cube. And as you can see, this cube is in front of the sphere. And the Z depth image for this render looks like this. And so, as you can see, since the cube is wider, that front face is white. And as you move further away, it gets darker. And so, what this allows Photoshop to do is to read the different colors of black to white and add blur in through one of their lens blur filters. And so essentially what you have to do is you have to get this Z depth image as the layer mask, as you can see here, and then use the lens blur filter to again, get that blur effect. The problem with this is that as you can see the edges, the outlines of these objects aren't blurred. So when you go into add blur, as you can see here, um, only the forms, like only the lines within the shape are blurred. So as you can see, this line is still crisp, which isn't how cameras, or how cameras work in depth of field and such. So um, this isn't really my favorite method because it's not the most accurate in terms of the actual ways camera work. So what we're gonna do is look at this render and how to do this effect manually. And so basically all I've got here right now is a render and a background. So there's the background, there's the render. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna convert this uh, render to a smart object. So we're not affecting it permanently and we can adjust the changes we make to it. And then we're going to come to filter and we want a field blur, here we go. And so essentially what this lets us do is, as you can see, we can just add points to our render and then it'll blur those automatically. So the first thing I like to start off with is defining what I want to be in focus, which in this case is this bench. So we're gonna pull this over to here and pull down the blur back to zero. So I like to start with the focal point and then move all the way to the foreground and sort of work your way towards, back towards the focal point. So then we're gonna start with, this is the closest point in the render. And as you can see, it doesn't really understand how their image works spatially because it just uses that as pixels. So you can see we're getting some blur leaking up here, even though these would be in different um, planes as you move away from the camera. So what we want to do is we want to set this blur maybe around eight and then come over because essentially depth of field works in planes parallel to the camera. So you want to work in similar planes as you add this effect. Um, so this is the closest plane and the max we're going to put our blur at is eight. So now we work from eight and move towards the focal point slowly refining the selections and reducing the amount of blur. So towards the front of this grassy patch, we're gonna put this somewhere around maybe five. And then since there's quite a jump in distance from the camera to the front of the grass to the stairs, we're gonna put this around two, make that a lot lower. Then if you look closely, you can see we're getting some blur up here where we don't want, because since it's behind the focal point, this should all be in focus. Uh, we're gonna pull that down to zero. And yeah, that's looking pretty good so far there. And then now for the right side. So you can see there's an inconsistency in how blurred this edge is. So we wanna come in here and reduce this blur down to about four and then have this also be at four. And then now as we're moving closer to the focal point here, we want this to also be around two or three. Yeah, I think two. And then again, we're getting some 
incorrect blurry here. So we're gonna put another one there. Drop this back down to two. 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 I'm gonna get this water to look a little bit better. There we go. Yeah. And so now you can see this sort of is starting to leak blurriness up into the curtain area. So we're gonna pull this down to zero. And then grab some here, bring that back down to zero. Yeah, so I think in terms of that base render, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit okay on that. And then for a comparison, let's bring up this original one. So before, you know, after, and this is before. So if you look closer at this spot, you can see that uh, focal blur we're right in there. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with this new one we've created. So now what we can also do in terms of actually adding new elements is create a new layer and put it at the very top. And we're gonna come over to filter and make these trees. And I, well, as, as you can see, there's a bunch of options for trees. I like to use this young Robinia tree. Um, and so what we're looking for is um, a tree that has enough leaves to really make a presence, but isn't so dense with leaves that um, it sort of blocks out a big portion of the render. So if we look back at our image, the sun is coming from the right. So we're gonna move the light direction over to the right. So now this side is lighter. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay on that and then pull it to about here. Filter blur, we're gonna use a Gaussian blur. And so remember our earlier from the uh, field blur, our maximum blur was eight. And so spatially these leaves would be a little bit closer. So we're gonna put that at 10. That looks good. So we're gonna use it sort of position and frame and then yeah, so you can just sort of add uh, as many of these framing elements as you need to. Maybe we could do the pink one. Cherry blossom. So you can reduce the thickness of the branches to make it a little less dense. Less leaves. Maybe slightly bigger leaves. Yeah, there we go. So let's say you want to have this be more pink, then we can come to Gaussian Blur and do the same thing. And then the color that starts to add. And just, this is nice because it sort of uh, re-emphasizes the bench as the main focal point um, and adds more depth to the image. Um, so yeah, that is how you can go about adding depth of field to your image uh, after you've already rendered it because all some softwares just aren't able to render depth of field straight out of your program and it can add a bunch of time to your, to your render. So it's really easy to do it in Photoshop and it's kind of satisfying too. So yeah, good luck, enjoy, thanks. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Bye.